Hello, my name is Stanislav, and uh, now I will tell you about some tips and tricks for machine learning. I'm a former number one on Kaggle, but uh, that was a very, very long time ago. So maybe you uh, know all the things better. Um, uh, also, all uh, these tips and tricks are useful for real mm, problems, for real business problems. So I will not tell you about uh, some data leaks. I will not tell you about how to probing leaderboard. And I will not tell you how to build 15 le uh, level stacking. Okay, uh, let's start from vincerization. Uh, what is it? Uh, it's uh, limiting extreme values in data to reduce the effect of possibly outliers. Imagine that you are solving a usual mm, regression problem. Uh, on the left picture, uh, you can see the di distribution of target with a very, very long tails. So uh, most of uh, regression machine learning algorithms optimizing uh, MSE metrics. So uh, it will overfit on very big values and uh, underfit on uh, usual values. The solution uh, is to vincerize it, vincerize our target. For example, all data below the first percentile set to the first percentile, and data above 99th percentile set to 99th percentile. Uh, besides, it uh, changes only several percents of data. Uh, it uh, can improve uh, a lot. Okay, uh, now let's talk about target transformation. Uh, all of you uh, know everything about uh, what to do if the metrics not uh, MSE but MSLE. You need to uh, make a algorithm of target, uh, build uh, usual machine learning models, and after make an uh, inverse transformation. It's okay. But uh, uh, for one time, it was useful to create a non-trivial solution. Uh, it was useful to create several outputs for one neural network. One output was just y, next output was y uh, square rooted, and the next output was uh, y squared. Uh, and it really helps. Uh, it was uh, some kind of regularization in such way. Also, don't forget about prediction transformation. So, uh, after building model, you can uh, tune it uh, into several ways. For example, sometimes machine uh, learning models uh, predict uh, everything around uh, 0 0.5. So you can uh, help uh, it uh, moving such uh, predictions uh, near around 0 or 1 with such formula. Another very simple trick is a, uh, making linear regression as a feature selection. Imagine that you are working on an NLP problem. You have a very, very big data set with a sparse matrix. For example, around uh, 10 million features and uh, several million objects. Uh, if you want to uh, build usual uh, tree-based uh, machine learning algorithms, it can be very slow and uh, bad. Solution is very simple. First, uh, you need to fit simple linear regression model with L1 regularization. After that, select important features, for example, several thousands, and after that, build usual tree-based machine learning models on such features. Okay, next thing is about 
uh, some data sampling, train data sampling. Everyone knows about uh, bagging. It's a select uh, subset of train data and um, build model several times. But for me, it uh, was very useful to do um, external bagging. Uh, what is it? Uh, we choose not all our train samples L, but we add more samples, for example, twice L uh, samples. And uh, also we build several models for k times and average their predictions. And uh, this is suitable for all machine learning algorithms, not only for tree-based. Another trick with train data sampling, if we have uh, some time series, uh, a uh, very big time series, for example, several millions. The problem is that uh, near objects are very similar because uh, building features in the data set uh, is uh, always using some lag features or statistics or other things. So models uh, finding uh, not global dependencies, but more local. To avoid this, uh, you can uh, select not all objects in train data, but select each k object. Uh, and after that, repeat it k times and average that. It's also very helpful. OK. Next thing is about feature generation only for linear models. Uh, imagine that we can use only linear models. For example, we are sitting in the bank or uh, uh, do some credit scoring. So that's a restriction. Uh, first, uh, let's uh, imagine that we have only one feature, x, and we need to predict y on the x axis x and y axis is y. If it has uh, almost uh, linear dependence, it is uh, very uh, simple and uh, results are good. But what will be if the dependence is not linear? If we build such linear regression, it will be awful. Uh, what we can uh, do in this way? Let's create new feature space. So uh, not uh, as a train data not select x, but select absolute value at x uh, min minus zero, absolute value at x minus five, etc. So we not create uh, new features, we just create new feature space. And in that space, linear models uh, will be work very good. You can uh, see the results on the picture. And also, it's possible to create other features that could help only linear models. For example, not absolute value, but sign of uh, such feature. Also, we can uh, calculate some distation, for example, x squared or in other power. Also, we can find uh, not points uh, using only x, but using uh, several features, x1, x2. Also, we can create like uh, tree-based features. For example, uh, feature will be equal to uh, one if uh, that uh, condition is right and uh, zero in other case. So uh, it looks like we select the uh, tree leaves in our uh, tree-based models, but for linear regression. So uh, you can build first 
tree-based models, and after that, finding all such leaves, all such parameters, fit exactly linear regression. Another thing uh, what I want to talk is uh, about very simple similarity measure feature. Uh, uh, it often need to uh, build uh, some um, similarity measure features. For example, between texts or between pictures or between logs or any other objects. So uh, for text, we can uh, create a lot of different features. For example, number of uh, common words, number of common letters, other things for pictures too. But there is uh, one method that can do for any such of data. It's normalized compressed distance. Uh, what the idea? Idea that uh, we select first object, after that select second object, and uh, uh, select uh, some of the compressor, for example, gzip. After that, we zip first object, first zipped second object, and uh, zipped both object. So if they are similar, then uh, file sizes of zipped union objects uh, uh, will be almost uh, the same as file sizes of uh, each of one object. That's a very uh, simple but very interesting and powerful idea. And it is suitable for all type of data, uh, rather unstructured. Uh, next thing what I want to talk is about isotonic regression. Uh, there was several words before about it, but I repeat. Uh, if in the problem you know that function does not decrease, you can do post-processing with the help of isotonic regression. So first you uh, build your usual uh, tree-based models, predictions, uh, and after that you can do post-processing uh, uh, with isotonic regression. Uh, it can help uh, when we have uh, some time series and uh, events on that time series. So we know that uh, function does not decrease. It uh, helped me once time. Next, I want to tell about some very interesting and uh, unusual machine learning approach. Uh, first of all, in AXA driver telematics analysis competition. Uh, it's a uh, very old competition on Kaggle. The problem is that we have card tracks for different drivers. X and Y coordinates for each time interval. Uh, tracks can be different length and it's all uh, obfuscated. Uh, we have total around 2,000 drivers and around uh, 200 tracks for each driver. Uh, also, it is known that for each driver, there are a small amount not of his tracks, about five or 10 percent. Uh, and the uh, objective is to find for each driver where it is his tracks and where not. Uh, so we want uh, to find some driver behavior uh, of its tracks. How to solve this problem? Uh, the main problem that, in fact, we don't have any train and test set. We have only, only the data. Of course, we can build uh, features for each driver's track that uh, show exactly his uh, uh, driving behavior. For example, we can calculate some statistics of speed, uh, mean, minimum, maximum, median, standard deviation, some statistics of uh, acceleration, and many, many others. But uh, what to do next with uh, such features? 
uh, of course, for each driver, we can run clustering algorithm and hope that he find his tracks and uh, not his tracks. But uh, that doesn't work in real life because uh, clustering algorithm, for example, can find uh, long tracks and short tracks. Or it, it always be a clustering, but not what we needed. So what is the solution? Solution is uh, to create your own train test set. For example, take only one driver with 200 tracks and generate all features, track features. After that, uh, let's set the target value as one. Next, take uh, 1,000 tracks from other drivers. We know that this is uh, not tracks of our driver. So we can set the target value as zero. Uh, we got uh, our own train set. Of course, not uh, all uh, ones are true, but all zeros are true. And uh, in fact, we can build classifier on that train set. What to do next? Just uh, run this uh, model to predict the driver again on that 200 tracks. So we can uh, really find where is his tracks and where is not. And uh, in uh, that problem, uh, matrix area under curve was around uh, 0 0.9, so very good. This is an example of uh, a really interesting and unusual machine learning approach. And uh, another example is uh, rather complex. It was in uh, Greek media monitoring multi-label classification competition. This is uh, one of my first competitions on uh, Kaggle. That's why I'm very proud of it. Uh, we have uh, 8,000 documents and uh, 200 classes. What we need to do? Uh, we need for each document select set of topics classes. And the matrix is uh, F1 score. What is the main uh, problem of, uh, of that? Uh, the main problem that we can build uh, classifiers but with uh, predictions, not with uh, right topics. Uh, here, for example, uh, how this matrix works. Uh, if a document right topics are football, England and sport, then of course football, England and sport is a perfect score. Football is sport is also good. We lost only England. Football, hockey, on England sport is also good. And uh, prediction hockey France is bad. So that's how matrix work. So we need to select exactly topics uh, and uh, not probabilities. We can build 200 classifiers for each class topic. What to do next? For example, we can select all topics only with very, very high probability. But uh, in fact, uh, for one document, it can be zero selected topics or uh, a large number of topics, this is bad. What we can do more? We can uh, select only one topic. Not a good idea. Maybe we can adjust all probabilities to one base. It's very hard. Uh, what is uh, my solution? Uh, Let's uh, bring each uh, document and sort all our topics probabilities descending. Next, for each document, select where we should put threshold to optimize exactly our score, F1 score. 
when we push in threshold, we select all topics to the left of the threshold. And uh, let's remember left and right boundaries for optimal threshold. This is the example. Uh, we have uh, five classes topics. True classes are uh, one, zero, one, zero, zero. Next, there are our predictions for all of uh, such classes uh, sorted. You can see it. And uh, we can uh, put threshold on uh, dot places. So we can select uh, zero topics, one topics, two, three, four, or all five. And uh, as we know, true classes, we can uh, calculate the real F1 score for each of this place of uh, threshold. And uh, we can find the optimal place for our threshold. On this picture, you can see it as a brown color. Uh, so answer uh, is that optimal left boundary is point is 0 0.6 probability and optimal right boundary is uh, 0 0.3 probability. So what to do next with that? Next, let's build another machine learning algorithm to predict such boundaries for all documents. So it uh, not looks like staking, but we uh, uh, make another machine learning algorithms over, over existed machine learning algorithms. So we uh, train our machine to solve uh, exactly our problem, optimizing F1 score. And after that, we can just create train set for such problem, create features, and uh, make a solution. That's uh, another way uh, of unusual machine learning approach in competition. So, uh, thanks for attention. And uh, I want to say not to be afraid to invent your own tips and tricks for machine learning. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Thank you. I have a question about the last approach. Okay. Uh, so why does it work? I mean, why can we predict this uh, threshold? Uh, so why instead the original, um, like uh, original model could not just give the same threshold? So why are we able to predict threshold? Why it improves our solution? Uh, how can uh uh, you want to create solution with uh, 200 predictions for each classes. Uh, as I've said, you can uh, select uh, one threshold for all probabilities, but uh, it can be bad because uh, for uh, that uh, metric, zero selected topics always uh, worse than selected all of topics or selected most popular topics. So uh, we need to uh, understanding the distribution of our uh, predictions, find uh, the right uh, place for our threshold. And uh, it uh, really worked. Hi. Hi. And thank you for your talk and sharing the tips and tricks. I have uh, another question about this approach. <laughs> uh, so basically, when you were training the other uh, model to find the boundaries, the optimal boundaries uh, for the F1 score, did you use the same training 
data or did you split somehow? Oh, of course not. Uh, I divide uh, all my training data on uh, first part, second part. On first part, I uh, learn our, uh, I train our uh, probabilities. On second part, I uh, train our uh, models for predicting boundaries for thresholds. It uh, looks like uh, stacking. All right, I, I have a follow-up question. So okay. uh, what would be the rule of thumb how to split the data set? Like what would be ratios uh, that you use? Do you use validation data set to basically find the, ra uh, the, yes. the best ratio? Uh, as I said, it's like uh, uh, stacking. So uh, we have one validate set that we don't use anywhere. And uh, uh, we have uh, 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 train one set and train two set. Uh, uh, it uh, divided as uh, one one. Thank you. Hi. Hi. No, very good presentation. Um, this is not really a machine learning question, but I'm curious to know in AXA. Like you showed how to do, how to approach it with building a train and a test set. Yes. But finally, what were the the best features uh, in the in the competition for you? Uh, yes, uh, very good questions. Uh, best features was a lot of statistics of uh, speed, of uh, derivatives of speed, of derivatives of derivatives of speed, derivative. Etc. Statistics, uh, it uh, not only minimum, maximum, but uh, zero percentile, tenth percentile, twentieth percentile, a lot of features around uh, 400 different statistics. And it uh, really show exactly the driver behavior.